Howdy folks, and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making apple fritters. Happy is that people whose God is the Lord. And apple fritters sure are gonna give you reason to be happy. Apple fritters are my first recipe every year when apple season rolls around because I can make them without heating up the kitchen because it's still pretty warm at the start of apple season. And don't let all these ingredients scare you off because all this stuff over here is just suggestions for different ways to top them. This is our ingredients right here. And we're gonna start with two to three cups of chopped or sliced apples. And I've done these a few ways. Um, if you want to slice them and do apple rings, you slice your apple this way after you've peeled it, and then you pop that center out, the core, and just a little metal measuring spoon or a melon baller or something will work for that. You just go around the edge and then pop it out. There's also other gadgets you can get that will take the cores out. Or you can chop them up just in pieces, or you can slice them the other way. Just slice them straight down this way and then cut the core out when you get to the middle. But however you make it, whether you want dipped apples or you want to dice it up and put your apples in the batter, it's the same recipe. And we're going to do it both ways so you can see how to do it. But first you got to get your apples peeled and either diced or sliced, however you want to do it. And you want to add about half a tablespoon of lemon juice to them. And that's to kind of help keep the color and it'll help keep them from turning brown and it'll also add some flavor in your apple fritters when they're done. Okay the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our spices here. Now how many spices and how much of each spice you put is kind of up to you. Um, it depends on your taste. I have about a teaspoon of cinnamon, I have about a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg, just a little bit, and a little less, like an eighth of a teaspoon of cloves. So what I'm using is a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg and an eighth of a teaspoon of cloves. Now cloves are very, very strong, and I also have a half a teaspoon of salt. Now you're going to have to have some salt in them uh, to make your batter rise. But you're also going to want a little bit of salt for all those apples. It will really accent the flavor and bring it out. Um, the other thing I'm using to flavor it is I have a teaspoon of vanilla. And I've got about three tablespoons of sugar. Now you can adjust that. Depending on your apples, it's going to vary how much sugar you need. You'll want anywhere between two tablespoons and a quarter of a cup. We only have a cup of uh, all-purpose flour here so you're not going to need a ton. You're only trying to sweeten a cup of flour. I'm also using two tablespoons of melted butter that I've let cool to room temperature and that's going to add flavor to it. And I have two teaspoons of baking powder. And I'm going to get some of this combined and get some of it out of here. Put my baking powder in my flour. And my spices, I'm going to kind of divide them up. I want to put most of them in my batter. But after I've mixed them together so that I've kind of got even amounts of them, I want to put a little bit of it in this bowl right here. Now this is cornstarch. It's just a quarter of a cup of cornstarch. And if you watched the onion ring video and you've tried those onion rings, you know what a difference cornstarch makes in the batter when you're frying something. So I'm going to add just a little bit of my spices to this cornstarch because I'm going to coat my apples in this. Maybe a quarter of my spices are going in that cornstarch. And the rest of them, I'm going to go ahead and dump in my flour. I'm also going to go ahead and add most of my sugar in the flour. All but maybe a teaspoon. And I'm going to add that in my cornstarch. I'm 
And give your flour a whisk to mix the spices in it and that will also get any lumps out. And we'll just slide this over here out of the way for right now. And we'll talk a little bit about our wet ingredients. We have two large eggs that we brought to room temperature and we want to give them a little whisk. And we're going to go ahead and add our butter to them and our vanilla. Now we're not going to put all of our milk in here with our eggs because we're going to want to adjust this batter consistency so that it's the right consistency. You don't want it too thick and you don't want it too thin, but you want it thin enough that it is easily pourable when we add it to our oil. So I'm going to add about half of this milk in it and I've got about three quarters of a cup of milk here. Um, you're going to want anywhere between a half cup of milk and maybe even as much as a whole cup of milk. It just kind of depends on the humidity affects it. Um, even I think atmospheric pressure affects it some. So you're going to have to adjust the milk a little bit to get the correct consistency on your batter. Okay, now I'm going to add my butter and my vanilla and my eggs and most of my milk into my flour. And you don't need a mixer or anything to do this. Um, you can mix it by hand because you're not going to whip it. This is kind of like a um, pancake. And you can even use um, complete pancake mix and eliminate a lot of these ingredients if you wanted to. If you didn't have all the ingredients for the recipe, you can use the pancake mix. And you would just add your spices and a little sugar and um, probably not even any butter. Okay, I'm going to have to add a little more milk for sure because that's way too thick. That's pretty pourable. I think I want to add just a touch more milk. Not even all this I have left, just about half of it. Okay, that looks pretty good there. You want it to all pretty much run off of your whisk. You don't want to have big lumps left on your whisk. That's about what you want right there. Now, you do want to mix up your batter before you dip your apples in your cornstarch and stuff because you want to let this rest for just a minute before you actually add the apples into it and certainly before you start frying it. Um, we've kind of talked about that before, letting your pancake batter and um, the Johnny cake batter and all that stuff. Any kind of batter you're going to fry, you want to let it rest before you start frying it. I'm just going to mix these spices in this cornstarch here a little bit. Now, if you have any cornstarch left after you've tossed your apples in it, you can add that um, to your batter, but usually when I make this, all the cornstarch sticks to the apples because they're a little bit wet from the lemon juice. And you can toss them in a bag or a bowl, just make sure whatever it is it seals up good and tight so you don't end up with cornstarch and apples all over your kitchen. Okay, once you've got your apples coated good with your cornstarch and your little bit of spices, we want to get our oil heated. Now, while the oil is preheating, we can go ahead and dip our apple slices and um, our apple rings in our batter and let them sit and rest for just a minute before we put them in the oil. And 
once you have your apple pieces all dipped and you've got them sitting and resting, you can go ahead and dump your apple chunks in. Um, now when you make these, you probably won't do two or three different kinds. You'll either cut your apples up in, and dice them and just stir them in the batter like what I'm doing right now. Or you'll slice them all or do sli some slices and some apple rings and dip them. But you probably won't do both. If you're feeding a whole lot of people though and you want to do them different ways, you certainly can. Because like I said, it's the same recipe. Whether you chop the apples up and dump them in here like I just did. Or whether you do them like these over here and slice them or ring them and dip them. If you're feeding a whole lot of people, if you're making these for breakfast and you're going to be feeding a crowd, you might want to do some both ways because people like them different ways. Obviously, these are going to have more batter or cake around them, and these are going to have more fruit. Personally, I like either the slices or the rings better than the, the little diced up apples mixed in the batter. I, I like the apple more than just the batter. But what you're going to get when these are cooked is you're going to, the batter is going to be, it should be light and fluffy on the inside and crispy on the outside. And the apple should be about the texture of apples in apple pie. So that's kind of what you end up with. And to me, the slices or the rings, they kind of taste like the little fried apple pies that you get, you know, like an apple hand pie or something, and I really like that. But you have that whole apple ring in there, and I like the texture even better than fried apple pies when you do the rings. I'm just going to drop one little chunk of apple in here so I can test the oil. Now you want to make sure the oil is really hot and bubbling good before you start adding your apples in. And I have just a few little bitty bubbles around my piece of apple that I dumped in there. So this oil is nowhere near hot enough yet. When I was growing up and my granny made these, she usually just sliced the apples because it was a little faster than making the apple rings. But my Aunt Dot would always do the apple rings for us and we call them apple donuts because they do look like a donut and even the the breading is very similar to the texture of a donut on the outside of the apple. So if that kind of gives you an idea of the taste you're going for or the texture you're going for, that's what you should get with these. Okay, my oil is starting to get hot now. It's dancing a little bit more around my apple piece there that I dropped in. That looks pretty good. That's what you want it to do when you drop an apple in it. Now you can use just about any oil to fry these in, um, especially these days because specific oils are kind of hard to find. If you can find oil at all, I am just using regular vegetable oil. There are a lot of healthier choices. You can use grapeseed oil or olive oil. Um, you could fry them in shortening. Um, just about anything that you can fry food in, you can fry these in. You could even fry them in butter, but that would be a little on the pricey side. You want to keep an eye on them as they cook. As they start to get done, they'll actually start to float. And you want them to be nice and golden brown, kind of like these right here are. And they don't take very long at all. I mean, like three or four minutes per side. Um, it'll kind of depend on your oil temperature and how thick your batter was, how long it takes it to fry. It'll also depend on how thick your apples are. Um, thicker apples, of course, will take a little longer to cook. You don't really want to cut them much thicker than a quarter of an inch because if you cut them thicker than that, the apple's not going to be that apple pie texture. It's going to be crunchy and it's not going to give you the the right taste. You want the apple to mix kind of with the batter and if you cut them too big it won't do that. Okay our first one here is done 
and it was one of our apple rings and you can see why we call them apple donuts when we were kids it looks like a donut as you take your apple fritters out you want to add more to the pan um, that will help regulate the temperature of your oil and keep it from getting too hot and it doesn't matter if you're doing the slices and rings or if you're doing the batter and the apple chunks now if you're doing the batter you want to put it in in about a quarter of a cup um, scoops per fritter so just a little quarter cup measuring cup works pretty good just scoop it out and add it to your hot oil And while our fritters are frying, let's kind of talk about some of these toppings because my favorite topping has to go on while it's hot. And my favorite topping is probably the simplest. You just take a quarter of a cup of sugar and a teaspoon of cinnamon and you mix that together. And while your apple fritters are hot, you sprinkle the top of them. Now you do want to do it while it's hot because you want the hot grease to soak up the cinnamon and sugar so it kind of sticks to your fritter. Otherwise, all your cinnamon and sugar will fall off your fritter. This time of year, keeping some cinnamon and sugar mixed up in a um, shaker bottle is really kind of a good idea because it kind of is a, a seasonal flavor. And when my kids were little, I would mix up a great big shaker full of it and have it all through the fall and winter but all you do for this is just sprinkle the cinnamon and sugar on the fritter and this is a good topping for the pieces or the little cakes fritters that we're frying up here now the second one that i'm going to show you is just a simple glaze and this is like a donut glaze. You want a cup of powdered sugar and about a quarter teaspoon of vanilla and just enough milk, water, or apple juice or apple cider to make it pourable. Now, if I had had apple juice or apple cider, I would definitely use that in this instead of milk because it would add to that apple flavor. And you can put a little cinnamon in here too if you want to. It's probably not gonna take more than two tablespoons of milk, but it could take up to a quarter of a cup. You wanna add it slow. If you happen to get it too runny, just add a little more powdered sugar. About two tablespoons. You do wanna mix it until you get all the lumps out of it. but you want it like this where it's runny um, definitely not too thick you want to be able to pour this or drizzle it or you can dip your fritters in it and that's generally what's done um, while it's still hot and it'll melt the glaze you just dip the fritter in it like that you can coat both sides if you want, or just one side. Um, I usually just coat one side because it is kind of pure sugar. But now that really looks like a donut. And it's okay if you get some little pieces of fritter in your glaze, that's not gonna hurt anything. Now, another topping that I've got over here that goes well with anything, and I'll link a video to this, is just a little caramel sauce. Apples and caramel just go together. And you can drizzle this on them, you can coat one side with them, or you can serve it and let people dip their fritters in it. Like I said, I have a video um, that I will link to make your own caramel sauce. Um, and you can buy it too. I mean, if you're making homemade apple fritters, I think you could certainly get away with buying up the caramel. But if you want to do it yourself, we got you covered. Now, the last topping suggestion that I have over here is just sprinkle it with plain powdered sugar. 
Now, if you do that, you want to wait until your apples are cool, or your fritters are cool. And I think these here are probably cool enough. You, Alex got me this somewhere. It's like a little mini sifter, but you can get the little wire strainers and just the real small ones. I think they sell them at the Dollar Tree. Put a little bit in it and just tap it and sprinkle it over your fritters. If you don't wait until they're cool, when the grease is still hot, it will just absorb all the powdered sugar and you won't even be able to see that you sprinkled it. Um, that's actually probably the easiest, but like I said, my favorite is that cinnamon and sugar. It adds just a little bit of texture on the outside and it adds a whole lot of flavor because it's got the cinnamon in it. Uh, Brett, probably likes the glaze better and I think the kids all like the caramel better so with a few options you have the ability to feed a lot of different tastes and like I said you can go with more cake or you can go with more fruit um, to suit the taste of the people that you're feeding and if you happen to have an apple tree this is a very inexpensive way to feed a whole lot of people breakfast or maybe a dessert or something. Um, I think this would be a good dessert if you were doing a cookout or something like that. Maybe take your skillet outside and fry them outside. Or it would be a fun thing to have at uh, some kind of a fall festival at church, a harvest festival or something seems to me like the kids went to a harvest festival somewhere where some of the ladies were making apple fritters. Well, you've got the idea. You see how this works. You just keep adding fritters to your pan and taking them out. And as you take one out, add one to regulate your oil. Now, when you get down to the last fritter, as it gets close to done, go ahead and cut your heat off and let it finish frying in the hot oil. Because if you've just got one fritter in this pan and you leave the heat on, it's gonna, the oil is going to get so hot that it's going to burn your last fritter before you take it out. So as you get down to like the last one or two fritters and they're almost done, go ahead and cut the heat off. And that will keep those last one or two from burning. And as long as you let your batter sit, like we did, the very first one should be as fluffy as the last one. I definitely recommend draining them on a rack, not on paper towels or something, because if you drain them on paper towels, the bottom of them is going to get really soggy. Apple fritters date back a couple hundred years at least. The recipes are probably about as old as apples and flour. Um, I imagine this is probably one of the very first things that was cooked once flour came around because apples were here before flour obviously but give this recipe a try um, change the spices a little bit to suit your taste if you like it sweeter make it sweeter if you don't want it as sweet leave some of the sugar out maybe in the comment sections you could leave a, a special spice that you like or maybe a different topping something that i don't have here already and kind of let me know what your favorite way to eat these is. Because I know everybody has had these at some point in time. And if you haven't, you certainly should try them. Because like I said, it's a recipe that's been around for several hundred years. And it's still loved. It's pretty simple. Like I said, I know we had a lot of stuff out here. But that was totally from scratch. And I had a lot of extra stuff too that you don't have to have. Thank you so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you haven't already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.